let's talk a little bit about you as uh, an ice skater, then having become How a, did I get here? Yes, how did you become I, a choreographer? How did I get here? I <laughs> Why are know. you here? How did you get here? <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so yeah. walk, walk me through the first time that you put on a pair of skates until now. So we'll be here for about uh, how Oh, years? it's a long story. <laughs> I'm from a really small town. Mm-hmm. And, um, in Canada, what is it called? Nobleton. Yeah, it's north of Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, not that far north, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe 3,000 people mm -hmm. when I was little. I'm here with my okay. two aunts, so I'm looking for about 3,000 people. Oh. <laughs> 1,000, oh my God. People. And at that, we lived a mile outside of town. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, like every small town has a figure mm -hmm. skating club. And yes. I think what happened, I mean, I remember being taken was that you know, everyone goes to the skating show mm -hmm. that they have. The skating club puts on a recital at the end of the season. So it's a natural thing for everyone in your community to just to go do. to yeah. an ice skating show. Right. Okay. Yeah. Like going to the circus for most people. Exactly. Yeah. And perhaps my sister, I don't know. Uh, my sister, she died when I was young, but oh, she sorry. was 12 years older than me. Mm -hmm. So perhaps one of her friends was in the, the skating club. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so we went to the show. And then apparently I really liked it, and mm -hmm. I said, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And so the next season, which would have been the fall, all I remember is them bringing me to, you know, where they have the group lessons. And, and like, how old were you? I was six. Okay, very young. Yeah, I was six. And there was all these kids on the ice. And I started crying. I didn't want to go. Because mm. I guess what it was is I wanted, when, you see, when I saw the show and all the lights mm -hmm. and the costumes, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But when I saw how skating really was mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't want to come <laughs> you I just wanted to me. perform yeah I guess yeah <laughs> I wanted a costume and lighting a solo right away <laughs> so that's how it started and uh, yeah I mean I I was a competitive skater but yes. I'll be perfectly honest by no means was I anywhere near Yuna's caliber or success mm. you know I actually never achieved even competing nationally. Mm -hmm. I was a really nervous kid mm -hmm. and a really self-conscious kid, mm -hmm. and I was a little chubby. <laughs> so I, I, I always say, you know, I, I became a proficient skater mm -hmm. and I passed my gold medals, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I did compete to the junior level. Mm -hmm. By the time I was 18, I knew that there was no point in going mm -hmm. any further, mm -hmm. and it didn't make me happy. Competition mm -hmm. didn't make me happy. It just stressed you out because yeah. you didn't feel that you could achieve. The... I don't have a competitive yeah. nature mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. I had no idea I wanted to be a choreographer, but uh, one of my friends was in Ice Capades. Yes. And I was talking to him about it, and I that sounded like a good idea because mm -hmm. I wasn't ready to go to university mm -hmm. yet. I wanted to go to university. I see. So I auditioned, and I got accepted to be... Uh, in ice capades. I remember as a kid watching ice capades probably like once every two years and yeah, absolutely I might have seen I you. I remember you're from DC? Yes. Well we played I played DC twice. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That would be so the, wild. the one time I was in DC what yes. made it special was that Dorothy Hamill was our special guest star mm -hmm. and there's just enough of a generation gap yes. that for me as a kid Dorothy Hamill was like Yuna. Yes. The, she was the icon the of ice skating. Ubiquitously sensational. Yes. Yeah. And so not only did I get to skate with her, but I got to know her. Wow. You know, like I made sure to always sit with her in the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> Just and pull up beside yeah. her. We became really friendly. Like she's Aww. the nicest woman, the mm -hmm. nicest, sweetest girl. I had a Dorothy you know? Hamill um, doll. Like, <laughs> wow. You know those like Barbie dolls? Yeah. I used to have a Dorothy yeah. Hamill doll and like skate her around my floor. <laughs> she was, I mean, really... The, it wasn't until Michelle Kwan that another skater reached that kind mm -hmm. of notoriety. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was special. I would go, be, before her two numbers, mm -hmm. I would go make sure, I, I was always late getting my costume on and running to the ice, mm -hmm. but when she guest starred, that whole, it was two weeks, it was yes. a two week gig mm -hmm. in uh, DC, I would be backstage before her numbers started because she would warm up behind mm -hmm. the curtain. Mm -hmm. And so I would just hang out backstage in case she might want to talk to me. I don't know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> and then I would watch her number through the, through the screen because it was mm -hmm. a transparent screen mm -hmm. every night. And wow. then call my mother and, you know, tell her how cool I was because I'm best friends with Dorothy. 
<laughs> I've since so awesome. met her as an mm -hmm. adult, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, when did I meet her? Uh, at the Olympics. I remember sitting wow. with her at Olympics, wow. watching Una practice, and I reminded her of all that, wow. you know, because I knew she wouldn't necessarily remember mm -hmm. me, because, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, she's fantastic. David, tell me about your first experience as a choreographer. The choreographer, wow. Yeah, um, actually the first person I ever got asked to choreograph was herself a senior lady. Um, I lived in Montreal at the time, and I was really, I was really nervous because like, I never competed as a senior competitor. I competed mm -hmm. to the junior level. Mm -hmm. And I really, I was really ill prepared, mm -hmm. you know, because it was something I was asked to do, having not ever prior, like thought about doing that. Mm -hmm. But um, I can't say that I wasn't, you know, excited about it, mm -hmm. but it was scary. I think I probably rehashed all the choreography that I ever did in Ice Capades. <laughs> so I should, I should have, uh, I should thank Sarah Kawahara because she was one of my idols and she was the choreographer of the I show see. at the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it always takes us a while as choreographers to find our own voice, mm -hmm. and I don't know when that happened, mm -hmm. but it certainly wasn't right away. And what did that feel like? Your first time. Um, being a choreographer and someone performing what you've created in your mind oh. was what did it feel like yeah you know it's changed I think when I think back uh, those early years uh, it was more with skaters on the regional level mm -hmm. and then a few skaters at the national level mm -hmm. so I would oftentimes go to the competition mm -hmm. I would be there and it was hard I probably shouldn't have I didn't that was what was expected of me at the mm -hmm. time. But of course, like I told you, I hated competition. Mm -hmm. So it was almost like reliving all of my past nightmares. Oh, no. But not being able to, obviously, you don't want to let that show because mm -hmm. you're there to support the, the skater. Mm -hmm. It's all about them. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't enjoy watching my work oh. for the longest time. Really? No, because I felt self-conscious, as if it were me out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was... You know, felt all the, the nervousness and the terror that I used to feel mm -hmm. uh, competing myself. What, so was it so, scary for you to yeah. to see? That? Yeah, it was. It was. I have to say it was. Loved working every day. Mm -hmm. Loved spending my time on the ice mm -hmm. with the skaters, but it was scary. So at a certain point, mm -hmm. I realized that, that being by the boards with the coaches mm -hmm. was not where I could do my best give them my best service mm -hmm. and it wasn't the happy place for me mm -hmm. and it wasn't necessary mm -hmm. so when I stopped going to the competitions in that role mm -hmm. sometimes I would go and sit in the stands or just just hear about it afterwards yeah. you know or watch them on TV mm -hmm. then I, I, I needed that detachment mm -hmm. because essentially once I've choreographed them mm -hmm. and worked with them because mm -hmm. I created the piece for them, mm -hmm. using them as my inspiration, mm -hmm. then it becomes their piece. Mm -hmm. And so by the time they're competing, it's not my piece anymore. Wow. It's theirs. Mm -hmm. you know? do, you, do you tend to listen to uh, criticism or praise about your work? Do you watch your shows uh, um, yeah. on television um, or, or not? Yeah, that's a tough one. I, I've always been so self-conscious about the way I look, the way I sound, everything. that. Mm -hmm. You know, in recent years, in the last, you know, six, seven years that I've got more media attention, that I just, it, it, even like I've been asked to speak, uh, the U.S., the U.S., the PSA, the Professional mm -hmm. Skating Association. Yes. So here I am giving a speech in front of 800 people. And it was, wow. So it was all filmed and they sell it afterwards on DVD. So I have that mm -hmm. on DVD. Mm -hmm. But I don't watch it because... I don't trust myself that I would be able to not become more self-conscious mm -hmm. afterwards. So I'd mm -hmm. rather just do it, let it be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more important for me to feel myself mm -hmm. and be myself. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't need to see myself. 